it's happening. The 2020 Digimon card game will launch in North America in January 2021 with a pre-sale this November. The first English language booster set, Special Booster 1.0, will combine the first three Japanese sets, New Evolution, Ultimate Power, and Union Impact, into a single 187 card base set. That still leaves over 150 cards from those three sets untranslated, but according to Bandai, the remaining cards will be printed in the next set, Special Booster 1.5. And alongside the first special booster, they will launch the first three starter decks, Gaia Red, Cocutus Blue, and Heaven's Yellow. This is a win. There has not been an attempt at localizing a Japanese Digimon card game into English since the translation massacre that was the Digibattle card game died off in 2002. And this 2020 Digimon card game is a great TCG. It's all about tempo and board position. You need to set up more attacks than the opponent has security to win the game, and stop the opponent from doing the same by getting out blockers and incapacitating their Digimon with option cards. Unlike a lot of other TCGs, hand size is not your god. Every color gets to draw cards just by evolving their Digimon, which creates a lot of equality between the different colors, as does the memory gauge resource system, where you paying costs to play your cards causes the opponent to have more resources to play their own. This game rewards reading ahead and defending yourself proactively, and if we can get it off the ground, it will be one of the best trading card games in the international market. That's where you come in. See, Bandai Namco's international branches have a terrible track record with Digimon, and with card games. Back in 2014, their US branch created their own Digimon Fusion collectible card game, which was a very fun and soundly designed game and even had a national championship for it. But Bandai cancelled it without any actual notice while card reveals for set 2 were still going on. Earlier, they localized the Battle Spirits trading card game in 2009, a TCG that's now one of the top 5 best-selling games in Japan but cancelled it after the fifth booster set two years in. In fact, the brightest hope we have for the future of the English Digimon card game comes from Bandai's handling of Dragon Ball Super, an original English TCG created using reused assets from a Japanese game. This game's future will be decided by a small fraction of people, and you're one of them. If the launch in January goes badly, the localization of future sets will get cancelled, just as the Fusion card game did. Just like with the Digimon video games and Operation Decode, the fans will be fighting tooth and nail against the wishes of Bandai Namco US and UK to keep localization going. Digimon is doing something very special, creating a community by bridging different generations together, getting kids and adults that have never touched Digimon before playing at the same table with longtime fans. I've been following this TCG since it was first announced in V-Jump last year, and I love it too much to let it go the way Fusion did. Here's the plan. If you're new to trading card games, you're probably thinking of placing an order on Amazon or buying the cards at Walmart or Target or another big box retailer. Stop. That doesn't help. Instead, call up your friendly local game store. The place people go to play D&D, Call of Cthulhu, Magic the Gathering. Tell your FLGS you want to pre-order the Digimon card game starter decks, and if they get in on the pre-sales in November, you'll be there. Big box stores don't drive card game sales in the way that locally owned hobby shops do, because they don't participate in the secondary market buying and selling singles, so they barely buy any product relative to small businesses. The way the industry is set up, manufacturers like Bandai sell their product to wholesale distributors like Potomac, GTS, and Southern Hobby Supply, who take orders based on what local hobby shops put in for, and that means FLGSs are still the kings of the market. If you can, get together with your friends, find out who's playing what color, and set up a case split through your FLGS. The box art for 1.0 implies the set will include at least red, blue, yellow, black, and purple, so get yourself one player for each color and keep your eyes open for the full details on 1.0's pricing and set breakdown. Japanese cardons were just under $540, but the English Special Booster boxes have twice as many cards as the Japanese boxes, so a full cardon, which would get you 4-6 to six copies of every super rare, multiple alt art parallel prints, and secret rares could go up between $800 and $1,000, similar to what a cardon would cost in a Bushiroad TCG. A case split is a big operation to organize, but when hobby shops see that they can make $1,000 in a single weekend and that they'll be able to do that several times a year and have singles to sell to other customers and on TCG Player and eBay year-round, that's when they start viewing Digimon as a steady seller. 
They're ordering that carton on top of other product they put on store shelves, and the big reinvestors will open product themselves to sell Chase cards online and keep their bottom line going. Money talks. If you and your group are pre-ordering cartons and having launch parties every time a big set drops and showing up and paying entry fees into weekly tournaments, that support at the retail level will translate to Bandai not having a choice at the manufacturing level. I won't pretend that this isn't a big ask. Unlike in Japan, launching a new TCG in North America is always a David and Goliath situation. When you ask a card shop to stock a new game, the manager's brain is going to jump back to Dragoborn, Luck and Logic, Digimon Fusion, and Battle Spirits, games that were all sent out to die against the big three, Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh! If they're a little older, they'll also be thinking about Kingdom Hearts, Harry Potter, and Mega Man NT Warrior. And if they've really been around the block, they'll remember taking losses on the first Digimon card game, and Duel Masters, and Spellfire. Right now, at this very moment, Future Card Buddy Fight's final English language booster set is being printed at the factory, and Argent Saga is spiraling down the slow road to cancellation. That's what we're up against. The idea that nothing else actually survives in a market dominated by the big three. But this is a miracle we can make happen. It's been done before, by Cardfight Vanguard, by Dragon Ball Super, and by Final Fantasy. And soon, by us. There's just one choice left to make. The digital world is calling. Are you gonna answer? <laughs>